Yo, what's up? Um, something that we didn't manage to do for the 200k ultra run was to take some really great body tests um, and then Cora do a uh, kind of preventative measures uh, and steps early on to kind of uh, reduce problems when you get older and actually I think this would be a really great test to do before I go into the uh, Iceland project is actually um, figure out what's going on inside. So, see you in So, um, welcome to the Ancora Performance Room. First things first, to give some context what we did prior to this moment, we're trying to develop what Ancora calls the health passport. The health passport contains a few different types of measurements. Um, one is the uh, body measurement, another is blood, and another is kind of mental uh, measurements. Uh, so the body performances are stuff like body weight, uh, body fat percentages, where most of the load and strength is coming from. Then we go on to a very robust and detailed mental questionnaire, uh, mental strength and mental health. Uh, this is all to try and figure out where I am at mentally as an athlete. So do I strive for goals? Um, am I, do I feel like I can perform under stress? Uh, what are my dietary needs? Uh, what do I enjoy the most? Is there anything that I am uh, indulging on? Anything? So it's basically a questionnaire to give a real in-depth understanding of each person. Uh, and then finally we go on to blood tests. Uh, the blood tests are measured uh, and co-referenced against a lot of um, science labs uh, in the country in the Netherlands um, to make sure that everything's correct and basically once we get all gather this information together uh, we have a really good understanding of uh, what the body's doing and also what the mental state of the person is so it's really great data uh, and it basically means that now when we look into Iceland um, we really understand that um, for instance the iron uh, levels for last year are too low and we need to sort that out um, or are the, is the, uh, am I at risk of a cholesterol issue so all of this data means that we can really customize a really robust plan for the individual who's um, yeah going to Iceland in my case. Once we've captured that data uh, it's then on to the uh, more interesting part for me, which is the performance test. Uh, again, for the Vondel 200 Ultra Run, we didn't really do much testing in terms of where did I start, uh, how did I develop going forward, and where was I at the end of my project, you know? So um, this test, what we're doing now, is the, um, it's like a VO2 max test. Um, also like a ramp test if you're into cycling you might know what that is it's basically put an extra amount of resistance on the pedals every 30 seconds or one minute start a very easy resistance and as the test goes on the resistance gets harder um, this is a really good and easy and efficient way to see the strength of a, a, an athlete and also what's the rate of which your heart rate changes and how much air you need to sustain over a long period of time. So you'll notice that um, it looks very easy uh, for now, um, but something that is uh, very well known about these tests is that it really just comes on thick and fast. Uh, I did another video inside my house uh, on a ramp test as well um, and I said the same thing there like it just really it comes out of nowhere and especially these masks that you have to wear do limit a little bit um, your normal breathing patterns um, so yeah you have the additional pressure of people being around you you have a mask on so it's yeah it's not a usual situation Now, it might not look like I'm trying really hard right now, 
but you might notice that my eyes are completely closed and I'm really, really pushing here. But yeah, I, um, when we did this test, I basically didn't eat uh, for 12 hours prior to the uh, test itself because we were doing blood tests as well. Uh, so I, was, I must say I was a little bit, um, I don't know, I was a little bit uh, underprepared maybe for this session. Um, but nevertheless, it really gave some really interesting data um, and now has given us a really great place to start um, for the performance and uh, yeah, performance tests. So now that we've collected this data, um, we're going to start tailoring it to the training program. So there was a, um, an output that came out from the heart rate was that my uh, most effective kind of slow, low heart rate exercise I can be doing is at 131 beats per minute. So if you know anything about the 80-20 rule, uh, you do 80% of your training soft and 20% of your training hard. So my bespoke tr training heart rate for my soft sessions are going to be 131 beats per minute. This will help me um, improve my endurance on the long run. Um, and it will basically allow me to train once or twice every day, basically all the time. Uh, and that allows me to not be burnt out. It means I'm excited to train. Um, and if you get into this cycle of training hard every session, uh, which I did for Ironman actually, uh, is that you burn out pretty fast uh, and training becomes pretty unenjoyable. Other things that have come out of this are uh, there are a few tweaks that I can be doing to my diet. I have a reasonably good diet but I have to think about having some more fish. Um, I, I'm pretty strict. I'm not a vegan or vegetarian. Um, I'm, I like to think I eat pretty clean. Um, but I could do better, so I'm going to start adding fish into my diet more because I predominantly uh, white meat. And as we go into actually making a diet plan that's going to actually come up uh, in a later episode, um, we have found some interesting data of my daily calorie burn without exercise. It's um, around 1,600 uh, calories just from being awake, you know, so... Um, I have to now make a measurement of, okay, 1,600 calories plus uh, what my daily burn on the bike will be. So it's, let's say, around uh, 800 to 1,000 calories per session. So if that's two times a day, then it's around 2,000 calories. So it's um, 2,000 plus 1,600. Uh, so to make um, a baseline amount of calories um, so I don't lose weight, I have to be taking in around 3,600 calories per day. Um, that's um, pretty high, I would say, for someone of my size, um, but I have to keep eating. Uh, the, uh, the idea is actually to uh, put on some weight before I go to Iceland. The reason for trying to put on weight um, is a couple reasons. There is um, a wind chill from being on the bike, uh, there'll be um, fatigue over the du duration of the ride. Uh, fatigue typically means that your body temperature fluctuates quite a lot. Um, so having a bit more fats on my body will be beneficial to me. So you don't get those uh, quick drops in body temperature and that can happen really fast. And that's just the kind of body practical stuff. And when it comes to starting to tailor the actual bike setup itself, uh, we're going to start looking into what size rim height I'm going to be using on my bike uh, wheels. That's the height of the rim itself, so the thickness. Um, and that will we'll make a calculation of my body weight uh, and the size of the rim height. Because if that rim height is too high uh, for, the, for my body mass, um, we're going to come into some issues when we hit the powerful crosswinds that are uh, very strong in um, Iceland. When you come through fjords, uh, the channels in between the mountains can produce some really high speed winds. Uh, so the last thing that, that you want is to have a high surface area, like for instance, like on a lorry has a high surface area and when wind hits it, uh, it blows over the, the lorry. So 
I don't want to be in a position where my body weight is really light and my tire and uh, rim height is really high because I'll likely be blown off my bike and that's the last thing I want. <laughs> Some additional findings from um, the blood tests. It was good for me to do this. Um, it's obviously um, a little bit scary taking these because the the information that you get back can often either be a good thing or a bad thing or send up some um, uh, warning signs for your later life. Um, this uh, was this is a good set of information to, for me to know because uh, as my calorie burn is quite high, I'm, I need to know that the food that I'm putting in my body is going to be good for what my body can handle. So for example, um, if I am at risk of a high cholesterol, where I look to get protein from, for instance, in eggs, I don't want to just substitute all of my meats for eggs because eggs carry a lot of cholesterol. So um, my body might react badly to that. And finally, with the performance itself, there, there weren't any wild uh, record breaking numbers on the uh, power outputs. Uh, we got pretty reasonable power data. This is um, mainly because I'm coming from a ultra running project where I didn't necessarily need to have much body mass or strength. I just needed to be able to have will to continue. So these, these numbers are really for us just to put a marker on from where I started this project. And in six months time, we'll see uh, where my improvements are um, and uh, see how my body weight is fluctuating and how my and how my body power and strength is adapting um, throughout my training. Something good that we can do with the power output, um, me and uh, Michael Broadwitz, uh, who I'd spoken about in a previous episode, um, we have a document that basically finds the uh, average power output of an athlete. Uh, you enter it into an Excel sheet and that Excel sheet will provide you with a reasonably accurate uh, fall off of power over each hour that you are cycling. So for example, if you set a uh, average power output at let's say 250 watts, this Excel sheet will give you a guide on how much power you're going to lose over the period of time. You know, so if you're um, really going hard then naturally your body gets tired and your lactic acid builds up and your fatigue builds up and this is a, um, a good guide on what my times will be over the period of 50 hours. So whatever power outputs I'm setting now will give me an understanding of if I'm able to get the, the, the time record, if that's even in my sights right now. Um, and when I get closer to the end of my project, hopefully my overall power output will be higher, which means that we should be looking at a course record time here. So super exciting. All data is going to be used um, and gathered up and trying to be used in the best way. So really exciting.